Hey my lovelies, back with another Fill Me In General Energy read. And if you're new to my channel, this reading can resonate whenever you find it. It is timeless. It can resonate with you for the day, the week, the month, or even the year. But because the messages are general, they will not resonate with everyone. So uh, take what resonates. Uh, Take what resonates, leave what does not, reverse the messages if that's how it fits your situation. If you would like to get a more exclusive um, experience with me receiving um, almost personal readings and being able to uh, curate, help curate the content that you see on this channel, you can join my Dreamer exclusive membership. You can hit the join button below this video to do so. If you like to donate to the channel, you can hit the super thanks button beneath this video. And if you like to check out your monthly zodiac readings, general love or finance forecasts for the rest of the year, you can hit the Vimeo links uh, in the description box. If you like to book a personal reading with me, the link to my website can be found below in the description box as well. And follow me on Instagram at serene dream things for guidance. And let's go ahead and get into your messages for this time. Okay, I'm getting a strong message about the ending of the month. So whenever you're watching this, I feel like the ending of this month is going to be very significant for you. It's like a light comes on or something wakes up or something is like you wake up or something is revealed um, at the ending of this month. And it could be like right at the very end of the month, like the very last day or maybe the last two days. But I get something about a fog. Prior to that, you were probably confused or you just felt like you were in the dark. You didn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden the light turns on that last day of the month or within the last two days of the month. That's what I get. Yeah, I get like a strong energy of you worrying about something prior to that time, though. You were trying to like, you were wrecking your brain trying to figure something out. Then all of a sudden the light turns on, you get an idea, a door opens, you know, just again, it's like a light bulb moment or it's just like an unlocking. I just keep getting that energy. Like light comes on, door unlocks. It could even be both. But it's like prior to that, you were probably beating on the door, like trying to feel along the walls, trying to find out there's like another escape. It's like I'm getting a, an image of you all being in like a room and you're trapped in there or so you think. But I feel like the door doesn't even look like a door at that time. Like it just I'm getting like cobblestone. So like you're in a room where there's like a like just cobblestone along the walls and you're feeling along the walls trying to figure out there's like some kind of secret passageway a secret door you know that you all can go out of you're looking for any kind of light but it's just a dark room surrounded in cobblestone and all of a sudden a light comes on you don't know where that light comes from because you were searching all this time there was no lamp there was no um there was no string or anything to cut anything on, like to pull to say, okay, a light's going to come on. When I pull this, it was no door and you were feeling along those walls for weeks, you know, for months even, and you weren't feeling anything. And all of a sudden the light comes on, you see there's a door there and not only is there a door, but now it's a little ajar. So you're just like looking around, like you're looking at all of this and saying like, we're like, I've been trying to find the light in a door for months. Where does this come from? You're not complaining. I feel like you're going out of that door. You're using that light to find your way out. But it's like you're like you're in your head the whole time. Like, what? how did that? It, what I'm getting in a practical sense of your, it's like you're saying to yourself the whole time you're going out of the door and finally finding your way out of this quote unquote trap or a mess that you've been sitting in. It's like you're saying to yourself, why didn't I think of that earlier? That's like the more practical way to describe the vision I'm picking up. Because it's like all of a sudden this idea hits you. You all of a sudden know how to resolve this, what to do. But like the whole time it's like you were going over and over. But this is the last thing you thought about. But it seems so simple. And you were thinking to yourself like, like as you're going out, you're like, why didn't I think of this earlier? Like what was wrong with me? Because again, it's going back to that energy like you were in a fog, you were in the dark. You couldn't see. I don't feel like it was time for you to see. It's like you you were complaining about being trapped. But I feel like 
there was almost like a danger that was lurking outside of those walls or outside of that room that you were in that you were being protected from. So you were trying to get out sooner, but I feel like the divine God was making sure you didn't get out a minute too soon because he needed to clear the danger first before he could let you out. It's almost like, I'm, I don't know, I'm getting a bear, um, like a wild bear. Like that was... Uh, kind of lurking back and forth outside the door like waiting to attack you I don't know but I feel like it's it's all metaphorical though so I feel like there could have been something that was like waiting to get you this could be an energy this could be a person even that was trying to like find a way to attack you but they didn't have a way to get to you so they were waiting for you to come out it's like somebody trying to like go showing up here at your house and saying, come outside because they can't get inside your house. So they're trying to get you to come outside so they can fight you or they could jump you. But you know, to remain safe, you need to stay in the house. Therefore, you know, you won't get attacked. I get that. It's like, but instead of you knowing that there was a danger lurking about, you were just like in this room, trapped in this room, just completely, you know, in the dark about what was going on outside. So you thought like it was just a cruel thing that you were locked in this room, trapped in this room with no light. And, and the reason why the light couldn't be turned on because again, if the danger that was lurking, if they were able to see under that door that a light was on, they could tell somebody was in there. So I feel like there was enough time where that room was pitch black. They didn't hear anything coming out of it. It was nothing. You know, it's like if they saw a light shining underneath something like we're just shining and some coming from the room in some way, they probably the danger probably would have lurked a little longer. But because the room was dark, it was silent and I feel like it was a, it was a soundproof room. So all that scrambling you were doing, trying to find your way out, anybody outside the room couldn't hear that. So the only thing that would have signified that somebody was in there is the light. And that's why the light had to be turned off. So it's like you couldn't you couldn't move. You couldn't leave that room. You couldn't figure out how to get out because you were being protected from some from an actual danger. While the dark and the feeling of being trapped wasn't pleasant, it was like it was a form of protection that was like while unpleasant, it was safe. Yeah. So yeah, again, now you're coming out. The danger is clear. The danger is gone. And I'm getting something about you like walking up the stairs. So I feel like this signifies an ascension. As you're coming out of the room and now this light has cut on, you're able to see where you're going. You have, you know, the resolution for whatever it is you're, uh, you were trying to find a resolution for. You know just what to do, where to go. You're also experiencing an ascension in in the midst of all of that. I'm getting something about you know how to, like you figured out how to, I don't know I'm getting Nini from Real Housewives of Atlanta in my head. Um, what I get from that message in, a, in, a, in relation to the ascension I was picking up, Nini found a way to like, cement her uh status on the show like although she's not on the show anymore it's like when you think about real housewives of atlanta it's synonymous with nini's name with nini leaks and all of were other characters it's like she became the biggest personality the biggest character like her or not that sort of made real housewives real housewives of atlanta what what it was so it's like, even in her absence, it's like the show in some way, it, it's like her presence is still in the show, like her spirit is still in the show. So I feel like what you're doing with this ascension is like you found a way to like cement your legacy or like cement your, your energy or your spirit into, I'm hearing like into the world, honestly. Like you were probably having a hard time trying to figure out what you were going to do with your life overall. Like you were, you, you didn't have a clear direction or didn't have a clear path. You, you probably didn't even know exactly what you were passionate about, or you had like 
fragments of things, but you didn't know how to put it together to make it into something to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to re- how I'm going to be remembered. Yeah. So I feel like this, where you're going now, going up those stairs, is like you're going up now because you figured out how to cement your legacy, how to cement your spirit in the world, like basically leave an imprint. And all this time that you were scrambling around trying to figure out how to make it out that room, what you were going to do, it's like you never thought about this. It never even crossed your mind until that last minute, almost like the 11th hour. But I also get a message about like when you come out of this room and you're starting to, you know, move about. You're traveling up the stairs. You're probably going to be encountering people that you were acquainted with prior to being trapped in that room. But I feel like they're not going to receive you the same way. This is not a bad thing. It may not feel good because I get like a a feeling of rejection. Like these people aren't going to embrace you the same way they embraced you before you went into the room. Like you almost look different to them. You feel different to them. And so it's like they don't really rock with you anymore. And you're like a little confused by that because you're like, we were really cool you know, however long ago. Like what changed? You're trying to figure out whether it's something you did maybe if you offended this person somehow, but you can't think of anything that happened, anything significant anyway that this person could be offended about and to make them switch up like this. But again, this is this is like a spiritual doing. I keep hearing like a lot of people are not going to recognize you because while you were in that room, you were scrambling trying to figure out how to get out, but all the while you were being transformed. You come out better, cleaner, brighter. And I almost feel like the people, the characters who you're going to be trying to reconnect with, they almost feel, or like the vision I'm getting of them is like, um, I'm getting soot, like people who have, who are covered in soot or otherwise dirt. Like they look like they haven't bathed in weeks. That's the energy they're in. Not to say these people literally look like this, but I feel like when you come out of that room and you start to move about, the people that you were connecting with, being acquainted with before, you're going, they have a very dirty energy in in comparison to yours. And it's like, you're still going to be trying to connect with them anyway despite seeing all this dirt on them and seeing that they don't they don't look like how you like the same way they don't see you like you look different they look different to you but you all have two separate reactions like you are still trying to connect with them and they are like rejecting you because you're not dirty like them anymore when you went in that room you got cleaned up And so in a more practical sense, I feel like your mind changed. Like you've been in some sort of isolation. Your mind was changed. Your, you know, your, your taste of change, your habits have changed. You talk different, you walk different. And now that you're back out in the world around these people that you were hanging with before, they don't recognize you. They're like, who are you? I don't know, you know, uh, the, you to talk like this, you to dress like this, you to, think like this where do you get these radical ideas from because there's something about these people are stuck in like a haze like they are i'm getting um the movie uh they clone tyrone and like when they the scene when they went to the club and they were at the dj like basically um signaled because the people in the club were brainwashed all the people in the neighborhood were brainwashed because they were consuming this product that was making them mental slaves and I get like I'm getting that in my head because the way that that's that DJ is like he signaled them with a phrase and then all the people in the club started chasing um Tyrone and and his friends out of the club to you know otherwise harm them 
until a guy showed up who was like the programmer or controller, I guess in a sense, a slave master or overseer. He said a phrase to cause them to freeze. But I'm getting that because I feel like that the energy that the people in the club had of just being like brainwashed. I, I don't want to call people this, but I'm hearing like brainwashed monkeys. It's like they're being trained or they don't even realize that they're under like a mental programming. Um, this is a part of, I guess, to put it in another way, like they are a part of the matrix and they don't even realize it. I feel like you've broken out of the matrix. So they don't recognize you. You don't, it's like they can only, their mind can only go as far as the matrix allows because they haven't broken free of that programming. You have. So when you start to speak and they start to see you, you know, and just interact with you, they're like, I don't recognize you at all. It's like everything seems foreign. Everything about you seems foreign. But it's like, instead of you, I guess, shunning them for being, you know, the dirtier energy, it's like they're shunning you. <laughs> so it's like, you have no choice but to like disconnect and move on. This is why I was seeing you go up those stairs. Cause you could be at the level, like trying to look around for all the people you once knew and just, you know, get reacquainted or reconnected. But then when you're shunned by these people, you have no choice but to go up to the next level. And this is where the real work begins. I know this seems like a strange message. I'm trying to describe it as practical as I can. So I hope you all are following it. But you know what? Like I say all the time, or what I, I always I always get in that energy where I start to say, like, I hope you all understand. But then I get like a reminder to say, like, it's not for everybody to understand. So those who don't understand, it's not for you. Those who are following this message, you know exactly what I'm talking about. As coded as it may seem, as impractical or... I guess that some, that some people will call it woo-woo as it may sound. You will know, like your sphere will resonate with this reading. So if you don't understand it, if you're not following, don't worry about it. This is just not the message for you this week. But um, yeah, back to the message at hand. I get like you're moving up. And I get like you have an estate waiting for you. So what I'm getting from that is like you have so much waiting for you. There's so much going, there's going to be so much at your disposal. The life that you're moving into is going to be almost like your wish is your command. You command whatever, you command to have whatever it is you wish for. I don't, I feel like you're moving into a state where you won't be denied anything. But the thing is because you've ascended, because you've broken out of the matrix, you don't, you no longer crave what maybe the average person in this, they're like, oh, I want, you know, $20 million. I want this big mansion. I want a yacht, you know, like all that stuff that people would normally want or go after when they have all this access and all these resources. It's like your commands, your wishes look a lot different. It's not to say that you won't have those things, but I don't feel like they're the priority on the list of things you're trying to accomplish at this level. Like your wish or your wishes have more to do with like the world as a whole. Like, first of all, I feel like you will be pouring into yourself to like your wish. Your first wish might be something like you know, um, being in a position to help others, like being in a position where you can basically just but like free reign to help others in whatever capacity they need. Um, I don't know why I was hearing world peace. I know that's not possible, but yeah, I feel like your, your wishes are just more along those lines. And then like the other stuff just kind of comes as like additives. They're just more like, okay, well, I'll throw in this mansion or I throw in this this money or I throw in, you know, this yacht or I throw in, you know, these vacations. It's it's like they're they're thrown in behind the actual wishes that have more to do with the world as a whole. Or like your soul, you know, it's like you everything that you're wishing is at a soul level, is to better your soul and not just appease you materially. 
because again, you've broken out of the matrix. So your mind is beyond that. Your mind is beyond like having a lot of money and, you know, cars, clothes, all that kind of stuff. It's like, that's nice. But you're like, I have bigger things. Like there's a bigger problem at hand that needs to be resolved. And I need to be in position. And I need to have what I need to have in order to resolve that at that level. I can't do it. It's like, you might even have a wish to like attract you know, people to help you with this, you know, to help you with the bigger problem at hand. So yeah, it's like you're moving on up into a different lifestyle, but it's like you're you're not selfish. Your wish your wishes have a lot to do with the world or humanity as a whole or raising the consciousness of humanity. Like you become a very sensitive spirit where you are I'm hearing to see your friends like that. So again, when you came out of that room and you started to try to reconnect with the people that you once knew and you saw them like that and the fact that they didn't recognize you, that they shunned you, that they looked dirty, that they felt lost when you were trying to talk to them, like they couldn't even understand a single word you were saying. I feel like in a way it broke your heart. And so it represented of it represented something that you needed to help fix. And that is to help humanity raise their consciousness beyond this level so that, you know, they too can break free of the matrix. Yeah, so I feel like you're pouring a lot of your, you're very, you're sympathetic to their plight because you know it's not their fault. You know, they just don't know better. They haven't been given the resources. They haven't been given the you know, the insight or the downloads about how to break free. So it's like you want to be the person to help them do that, to help them realize that there's a better way. And you know that while you were just connecting with the handful of people or trying to reconnect with the handful of people that you already knew, you know, there are so many more like them. And I feel like that breaks your heart. Like you're, you're operating at like you're, I'm hearing like a universal consciousness that's the level that you're at. So it's no longer just about you and your personal world. It's about the world at large, the universe at large. You feel like you need to do something to change it, to alter it for the better. And I feel like with this new life that you've been given, you're going to be doing that. You're going to be affecting the world. You're going to be a teacher of sorts. I'm not saying like a literal teacher, like in the classroom or even like a person who, or a, a preacher in a pulpit, not saying it. I feel like you're doing something, you're going to be a teacher, but it may be in a, in a non-traditional way. Um, I feel like your methods are going to be very non-traditional. But I do feel like they're going to be just as effective, if not more, than the traditional way of teaching. And I don't feel like you're going to be doing this alone because it's an impossible task to do alone. I feel like you're going to be attracting people, new people who are on this universal consciousness wavelength with you. And then you're, it's like you're, but in the sense, I feel like you're going to be the leader. I don't know why I get that because I'm getting the sense of you delegating. So you're going to be delegating tasks to these tasks, to these people that you, these new people that you're connecting with. And then together, you all as a team are going to be affecting the world for the better, helping to raise the consciousness of humanity and helping people understand there's a better way. I'm hearing that they've been lied to. You could, in a sense, even be starting a revolution. But you're not afraid at all. It's like that time that you spent in isolation when you were trying to find a way out, trying to find a resolve for whatever the problem is. I feel like it made you something about being locked in that room. It changed you. And it made you fearless. It made you selfless it made you bold so i don't the things that you probably will fear doing before you don't fear doing now not that you would 
put yourself in a position. I don't feel like you would be um, reckless and like putting yourself in the line of fire, like to be to die or anything like that. But I just get like you have no problem standing up to to. I'm hearing to the machine, which in this case would be like the controller of the matrix. Like you have no problem standing up to that machine, standing up to those standards or like calling it out and telling people like you're being lied to, you're being oppressed. And not just in a way where it just sounds like noise. You're going to be giving examples. You're going to be like hands on and helping people like come up like raise up to a different level of consciousness and it's like when they come out of their haze it's like they're going to be so grateful for you because they're going to be like i would have never i didn't even see what was going on <clears throat> yeah it's like people what was going on before you start to implement this change or affect this change in the world at least help to do that I feel like what was going on, the the level that these people were in, the matrix that they were caught up in, it's like that's the matrix is where you go to die. So a lot of people weren't realizing their true gifts, their true powers. There was a lot of fear-based thinking. I'm hearing fear-mongering going on. And it was where people, it's like a lot of things were, a lot of people just weren't realizing their true selves because they were stuck in that matrix that where they just lived and died. They never realized, and it's like, it was almost like they were operating like a bot. And so you're helping people raise out of that bot consciousness. Because you really do, I don't know, it's something about you coming out of this isolation. You truly have a heart for you, for humanity. Like you could have been a person who just had a heart. You loved who you loved and you loved hard, but I feel like now it's bigger than you. It's bigger than the circle that you had. It's like, you're like, there's a bigger matter at hand that needs to be resolved. And I'm going to do my part to make sure that's changed, that's resolved. I'm getting like Harriet Tubman. So like, because Harriet was a person, like she was someone who freed under her leadership she freed probably the most slaves in the in um in her time because of the way um and, and she kept going back to free more. So I'm getting her because I feel like you could have a spirit like that. Like you're you don't just stop at one or a few. It's like you you want to wake up as many po as many people as possible. Like I say, you don't have any fear of standing up against the machine. And it's not even about getting the praise for it. You just really have the heart to say, I want this world to change. That's why I was getting world peace. You feel like the more people wake up, the more peace can settle into this world. And the chaos will lessen. So it may not be completely eradicated, the chaos that is. But you're like, I want to be able to affect more peace and love in this world as much as I possibly can in my lifetime. I want to free more minds like Harriet Tubman freed slaves. You want to be able to say you you want to free more minds as much as many as you possibly can. I feel like a lot of you are going to leave this world. Like when I mentioned earlier about you leaving an imprint on this world, like cementing a legacy, you're going to do that. So while the work is from the heart, you are definitely going to be remembered long after you pass from this world. Your work is going to be something that people talk about for many life, like in, for many lifetimes to come. Many generations will know your name they will write about you. You might even have a holiday. Like a day in your honor. But I just get like your legacy is going to be cemented and it's going to be big and it's not going to disappear anytime soon. Many generations will know you and they will praise you. Give me a minute. I... <sighs> okay, I had to sneeze. Bless me, excuse me. But yeah, that's what I get. 
So this is going to be, be the beginning of you leaving your imprint on the world, cementing your legacy, and it's going to be huge. Okay, so that's all I got for this filming and general energy read. I hope it was helpful to you all. Again, if you would like to uh, get exclusive uh, videos and help to curate the content that you see on this channel, you can join. And I also have more perks coming. I also want to say like, I'm going to be implementing those in the next couple months. Um, just very special exclusive readings and other ways to connect with me. You can go ahead and hit the um, join button to join my Dreamer exclusive membership. If you would like to donate to the channel, you can hit the super thanks button beneath this video. If you would like to uh, check out your monthly Zodiac readings, general love or finance forecast for the rest of the year, you can hit the Vimeo links in the description box. And if you like to book a personal reading with me, the link to my website can be found below as well. And follow me on Instagram at Serene Dream Things for guidance. And I'll be back with more readings, lovelies. Bye.